I'm Tony Keith, the Christmas Light Guy. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to set up and configure Quinn LED hardware to run in FPP Remote Multisync mode. This includes using X lights to auto configure the outputs on both the FPP and Quinn LED hardware, uploading a sequence to the FPP and to the Quinn LED hardware, setting up the sequence to play in FPP and Finally, a working demo of all this. Now I've given you an overview of what's going to be covered in this tutorial. The first question that most people ask is, what is FPP Remote Multisync Mode? In basic terms, it's a network protocol that allows a device, such as, such as an FPP or controller, to run the sequences locally instead of the data being streamed to that device. This means the sequences, or media, are uploaded and stored on the device. Then the device listens for commands such as start, stop, and sync. This reduces the network traffic significantly. The FPP remote multi-sync is recommended for wireless and wired networks with high channel count where you're streaming lots of data across the network. Now I've given you an explanation of the FPP remote multi-sync. Let's see it in action. But first, you're going to need a version of the Quinn LED ESP32AE that has a micro SD card slot and a micro SD card inserted. I'm using the Quinn LED ESP32AE Plus full version on a dig quad. You also need the latest beta version of ES Pixel Stick firmware version 4.0 beta 4 installed or a bleeding edge version installed like I'm running. If you need help installing the ES Pixel Stick firmware, don't worry. Just check out my tutorial called How to Install ES Pixel Stick Firmware on Quinn LED Hardware. Next, let's take a quick look at my network diagram so you have a better understanding of how the devices are connected together and how communication occurs. I have a very simple wired and wireless network for this demo. It includes a Falcon Player or FPP run in version 6.02 on a Raspberry Pi, an 8-port switch, and a wireless access point with the SSID of LS for light show, a dig quad, and my laptop running X lights. Both the laptop and the dig quad are connected to the wireless AP. Once everything is configured, the FPP will send out multi-sync commands to the listening dig quad. Next, we need to configure some initial settings in the ES Pixel Stick firmware on the dig quad so we can use x lights to configure the rest of the setup from my laptop connected to the same wireless network as the dig quad is on i open a browser and use the host name address to pull up the home page my host name is dig-quad-ae1 here is what the es pixel stick firmware home page looks like from here i'll go to the device setup I will first enable the uh, primary input to DDP. Next, I will enable the secondary input or set it to FPP remote. I'm going to save the changes. I will also show you on the file management page that there are no sequence files uploaded to the controller at this time. That's all the firmware setup needed. We'll use X lights to configure the rest. I've opened up X lights and I'm on the layout tab. In order to save time, I've already added four single line models for this demo single line one and single line two, both have 200 pixels. Single line three and four have 100 pixels each. Next, I'll go to the controllers tab where I will configure the dig quad and assign the props to the appropriate outputs. First, I'll press Discover to find the dig quad. Okay. All right, it found the dig quad and my FPP main. Let me get rid of this first. Notice sometimes there's a problem with the actual host name. I'm not going to worry about it this time. Next, I'm going to press the Visualize button. And I'm going to drag the models 
onto the appropriate ports. Single line one goes on to port one, single line two on to port two, single line three goes on to port three, and four on to four. Once you've visualized and assigned the ports to the props, then you want to do upload output. This will set the output configuration on the dig quad. Okay, the upload output was successful. I'll go ahead and save. Next, let's verify the firmware setup on the dig quad. Jumping back to the ES Pixel Stick firmware interface, go to the device setup menu, and we can see that the outputs were configured correctly from X lights. Output 1 is 200 pixels, output 2 is 200, 3 is 100, and 4 is 100 also. Next, I'll jump back to X lights. I'll move over to the sequencer tab where I've already created a 30 second sequence with some effects on all four props. Nothing spectacular here, just a few different effects for a quick demo. First, I will verify the setup is correct using X lights to drive the dig quad. Let me first start my video. Okay, video is started. Let me enable the output. Output is enabled. Let's see if it works. Click on the first effect, Twinkle, and it seems like it's working. Next one is Chase. This one is Marquee. A curtain effect, a color wash, and the bars. Let me disable the output. Stop this. Stop my video. Next, I need to set up the FPP to run multisync, but first I need to upload the sequence to both the dig quad and to the FPP. Using the tools menu, select FPP Connect, and it will go out and find the FPP instances. So it found both my dig quad and my FPP main, which is correct. Notice that both are selected for upload. Also notice the FSeq type is V2 sparse uncompressed. I'm going to go ahead and press upload and upload the sequence to both. Okay, now let's go check the uh, dig quad to see if it uploaded to that. Go over to the file management and notice that the sequence file was uploaded to it. That's correct. Now let's go to the FPP main, go to content setup, file manager, and there is a sequence file there. That's correct. Let's also go to the output channels and make sure all the output channels are set up correctly. Yes, IP, data, uh, number of channels, that's all correct. Let's go back to the main status page. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and select repeat. But first, let me start my video. Okay, video is started. Now let's play and hopefully this will work. And it does. Notice that the elapsed time is counting up and the remaining time is counting down has a length of 30 seconds. Another thing that we can check is go over to the uh, multi-sync page and watch the uh, player, the, room, the player and the, the dig quad is set to remote mode. Notice it's counting up, which is correct. So this is one way to verify that the uh, multi-sync is working correctly. In this tutorial, I explained and showed you how to set up and configure Quinn LED hardware for FPP remote multi-sync operation. Almost the entire configuration of the Quinn LED hardware and the FPP was performed using X lights. The only settings where I had to use the ES Pixel Stick firmware UI was to set the primary input to DDP and the secondary input to FPP remote. The rest of the setup was performed using X lights. Not having any previous experience with the Quinn LED hardware, specifically the Dig Quad, which I used in this tutorial, I've really been impressed. And now with the addition of the new Quinn LED ES32AE, 
that has a built-in micro SD card slot. Sequences can be uploaded to it and run locally using FPP remote multi-sync mode. Remember, when using FPP remote multi-sync mode, the pixel data isn't being streamed to the controller, the FPP is sending small multi-sync commands to start, stop, synchronize the sequence which is running locally on the controller. This allows the DIG quad to control a high number of pixels on multiple outputs over wireless without delay or lag. I will definitely be adding several DIG quads to my display this year and of course all running in FPP remote multi-sync mode. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and learned something new from it. And if, if you did and would like to see more tutorials like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, The Christmas Light Guy. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. All you have to do is press the subscribe button below.